Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders board. It's Mitchell Renz here from Chat Sports. And coming up on today's show, the top 10 players with the most to prove during Raiders OTAs. For some of you that maybe are like, Mitch, what the hell are OTAs? I got you covered. NFL OTAs or organized team practice activities are defined by the league as in-person meetings and classroom instruction designed to help players improve during the offseason. These activities can only take place for 10 days during the course of phase three of the NFL's voluntary workout period. Phase one includes activities limited to meeting, strength and conditioning, and physical rehabilitation only. Phase two features short on-field instructional activities. Many rookie mini camps took place during this phase. Finally, phase three encompasses in-person meetings and trainings for the Raiders and their OTA dates. May 22nd to the 23rd, May 25th, and then May 31st to June 2nd, and then June 12th to June 15th. Circle those days on your calendar. There is going to be a lot of news, a lot of rumors to stay up to date on around the Raiders and to make sure you never miss anything on OTAs or anything around this team. Videos all year long, 365 days, and it's 100% for free. Make sure you're subscribed to the Raiders Report. So the way that this is ranked here is I'm going to work my way from 10, go all the way down to 1. 10 is important but one is the guy with the most to prove and in terms of most to prove this show again is presented by bird dogs birddogs.com promo code chat coming in here at number 10 is isaiah paul mayo linebacker safety hybrid the raiders they signed the udfa from usc last season he's been trying to put on some weight though from what i understand he's trying to get around 235 240 pounds to play a little bit more of that linebacker role. Raiders like what he offers in the box. The reason why he's on this list here is because he's trying to get extra playing time. And if he can prove that he's actually a reliable linebacker, I mean, that could mean bad things for Luke Masterson. It could mean bad things for a guy like Darian Butler. It could just lead to more playing time because Robert Spillane to me is the locked in loaded middle linebacker. However, with Isaiah Polomeo, the next name that I have to bring up is actually a player that you're looking at right now, and it's Divine Diablo. Divine Diablo, this Raiders coaching staff has high expectations for. Raider fans have high expectations for Divine Diablo. I have high expectations for Diablo. Unfortunately, through the first two seasons of his career, he hasn't quite lived up to it. Has there been some injury concerns? Yes, no doubt about it. He needs to get better in the coverage game. If he can't become more reliable in terms of coverage, it's going to be more difficult for the Raiders to be able to rely on him and put him out there in clutch situations as much as what this team wants. I want Divine to succeed, and I believe that he can. The question is, is he going to do it in year three? Now, we're only into two names. We still got eight more to go. Before I show you my top eight players with the most to prove at OTAs, who do you think has the most to prove? Which name do you think is going to be number one on my list? Can you look into your crystal balls and tell me? Well, we're about to find out. Let's go to number eight here. My players with the most to prove. It's Tyler Hall. And Hall is a lock to make the roster, just like Divine Diablo. To me, though, Hall has a legit opportunity to continue to win over this coaching staff. But he also has an opportunity to become a starting corner in the NFL. Not outside, but inside at the slot. And right now, with it being Duke Shelley, Nate Hobbs, David Long Jr., to me, those are the Raiders' top three corners as it stands right now. Some people might say Tyler Hall might be number four. That's a little rich for my blood. I like Ja'Korian Bennett. I like Brandon Faison. And being an outside corner is probably the harder route to go in terms of being a starter. But right now, if they want to put Nate Hobbs on the outside and Hall goes out there and he continues to shine... Definitely, definitely an interesting player. Number seven here is Neil Farrell Jr. The Raiders drafted the defensive tackle out of LSU last season. And was a healthy scratch here and there. The Raiders also drafted two defensive tackles and Nesta Jade Silvera and Byron Young. So what is exactly does that mean for Farrell? He's a big body. The Raiders want a nose tackle. And he needs to be able to show the work ethic. So strength and conditioning is going to be big for Farrell. He also needs to be able to show that he's reliable and loves football. That is really important here for him because this team is probably going to keep five, six defensive tackles, and I do think he ends up making the roster, 
But in terms of playing time, I would imagine he wants to get out there on the field. I should also note that if a player isn't healthy, like I see some of the people in the live chat spamming Chandler Jones, he's not on this list because I don't expect him to really participate during OTAs. Now, today's show sponsor is Bird Dogs, and I am super excited to talk about these guys because... I'm going to say two years ago, I started wearing bird dog shorts, and my dad was like, dude, it's a lot of knees. And I was like, you know what? Hey, I got nice legs. I'm going to show them off. And if you want to be able to show off your legs and wear pants that fit comfortably, go to birddogs.com and make sure you use promo code chat. As someone who loves looking good and feeling confident, I'm excited to share my personal experience with our new sponsor, Bird Dogs. These shorts and pants have truly changed the game for me. The fit is unparalleled. I have never felt better in any other clothing item. Not only do they make me look great, but they're so comfortable that I can wear them all day without feeling restricted. Plus, the stretchy fabric hugs my legs in all the right places, which you guys know what I'm talking about. When it comes to shorts and pants, I want three things. Fit, comfort, and versatility. If the shorts fit me well, I simply wear them more. Why? Because I like to look good. In terms of the comfort, when I walk around, I walk to work. You ever have shorts on and they rub the inside of your legs in all the wrong ways and you're like, I'm never going to wear those again. With bird dogs, when you walk, they're going to feel great. And they are super flexible. The stretch, it's unparalleled. And then the versatility. How many people are out there are big time golfers? If you want an awesome golf shorts, these are amazing. Do you want shorts to be able to go out? When you're hanging out with the guys for a few drinks, these are awesome. Who walks their dog? I walk my dog, Chuck. Do you go out for date night? If you answer yes to any of those questions, I believe that you're really going to love bird dog shorts. So one more time for those of you in the back, it's birddogs.com, promo code chat. When you're ready to elevate your wardrobe, if you're ready to elevate your wardrobe, raise your hand right now. I'll raise it for Chugs as well. This is where you got to go, birddogs.com, promo code chat. They're also going to throw in a free Yeti-style tumbler with every order. Not only are we elevating your short game with promo code chat, you're getting shorts and the tumbler. I don't know about you, man. Sounds like you're ready for Raiders OTAs. Sounds like you're ready for summer as well. Let's go to number six here on my list. It's McClendon Curtis, who listed as an offensive guard. That is a huge win for Curtis. Why? One of the things I've been talking about here on the show is, could he have a chance to start at right guard? Here's his first chance to make an impression. If he can make a good impression on this coaching staff, I think that they're going to be like, well, shit, we might actually have an opportunity here to put this kid at offensive guard, and we don't need to go out and spend any more. So McClendon Curtis, very athletic, really good player, has got some good upside with Carmen Brasillo. To me, it's going to be battling it out with Natane Moody, going to be battling it out with Alex Bars in terms of who could be that starting right guard. But when you're a UDFA, it is very, very important. Speaking of Natane Moody, he's number five here on this list. If the season were to start today, I really, truly believe that he could be your starting right guard. I don't believe in Alex Bars. Moody, to me, is a better fit for what this offense is going to look like in McDaniel's system. But he's going to have to battle. He's going to have to grind it out. For the first time in his career, he has the opportunity to be a starter. And I also see that he went to Fresno. I'm actually repping my John Borelli Fresno jersey right now. So if Moody has the opportunity to start, I really truly think that he's going to look himself in the mirror and be like, all right, it's time to put up or shut up. Also, that helps them keep on to a guy like Andre James. If they move on from James... That puts even more stress at the offensive guard position. So between McClendon Curtis and Detain Moody, who's the better guard? It's week one. Denver Broncos. Raiders offensive line trouts out there. Who do you have more confidence in? Is it Moody? NM? McClendon and Curtis? MC? I'm curious where you guys go with this one. Right now, it's Moody. It might be McClendon Curtis, though, come week one. Number four here on my list with the players with... The most to prove, Matthew Butler. The people who I talk to say that the Raiders regret drafting Butler, and it's only one year. He was a healthy scratch a ton last season. I also have heard from some, I'll call them good sources, that they don't know how much work ethic he has and how much he truly loves football, slash if he is good enough to be on this Raiders team. When I heard, slash saw those messages, 
I was like, oh, man, if you're not good enough to be on this Raiders defensive tackle team, it does concern me a little bit. But he should be worried about Byron Young. Like, they're going to keep Tillery. They're going to keep Byron Young. They're going to keep Bilal Nichols. What if they keep Nesta Jade Silvera? I mean, they're going to keep Neil Farrell Jr. How many defensive tackles does this team keep? Because I'll tell you what, Matthew Butler might be on the outside looking in. Number three here for the players with the most approved, DJ Turner. It's got to be on this list. He was a player that made the Raiders roster last year. They liked his special teams ability, good slot receiver. I'll tell you this, though. Trey Tucker took his job. DeAndre Carter took his job. And then if you also keep Hunter Renfro, I don't know where you put DJ Turner on this list. Right now, the Raiders have 11 wide receivers at the time that I am making this video. Right now. Turner might be 9, 10, 11. The reason why they kept him last season was because of special teams. Well, now you don't really need him at, at special teams anymore. So the Raiders did move on from Tyler Johnson. They added the new receiver. But overall, I, I mean, he's not going to beat out Tucker, Carter, definitely not going to beat out Renfro. And if they want to add some more height, I just I don't exactly see how Turner can even make this team. So because of that, he does have a lot to prove. Let's go to number two here on this list. It's Malcolm Koontz at defensive end. Another player that I do like. And when the Raiders drafted him out of Buffalo, I was excited. I was. To me, if he got the right opportunities, he could fit in some defenses. However, last season he played in only 67 snaps. It was like 6% of the time. And with this Raiders team, when I did my 53-man roster projection, I had them only keeping four defensive ends. Max Crosby, Chandler Jones, Tyree Wilson, and then... It's a fight for that final spot, and I think that they end up giving it to Jordan Willis, who seems like a more of a McDaniels player. However, if you just let Koontz just be an athlete and get after the quarterback, he would impress a lot more people than I think what the actual people who don't like him think. And then coming in here at number one with the Raiders with the most approved is Amik Robertson. To me, it has to be Amik. Why? For them to have Marcus Peters in on a visit, and if they end up signing him, then this is definitely number one. On top of that, you got Ja'Cory and Bennett. The Raiders' cornerback room is a very difficult mistress to figure out because there is a lot of question marks there. And Amika is the final player of that 2020 draft, so not a McDaniels guy, not a Ziegler guy. If you cut him, you can save $1.1 million. The problem is... Who gets the nod, right? Like, you're going to keep Duke Shelley. You're going to keep Nate Hobbs. You're going to keep David Long Jr. You're going to keep Brandon Face on. And then, like I said, at the time that I'm filming this right now, Peters is not signed. If he signs, I mean, if Peters signs, you might as well kiss Robertson goodbye. Tyler Hall, he's going to end up on the team. Corian Bennett's going to be here. They love Sam Webb. He's going to end up making the team. Like, they're going to have some difficult decisions to make. And unfortunately, because of all that, I think Amik might be on the outside looking in. So since Robertson's the number one player, and the last time I did my 53-man roster projection, I didn't have Robertson making it, and it was tough to do. But what do you think? Give me a yes. Give me a no. Will Amik Robertson make the Raiders 53-man roster? Let me know what you guys are thinking about because to me, I like him. I just I don't see how it's possible for him to end up making the team. Now, before you head on out of here, if you want to take a screenshot of this, please make sure you do so. You can always tag me on Instagram. You can tag me on Twitter as well. And, hey, tell people to subscribe to the Raiders Sport. After all, you did make it this far in the video. One more time, here are the top 10 players with the most approved during Raiders OTAs. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button for news rumors we got you covered and if any breaking news happens while i'm in cancun guess what jeremy chugs he's gonna have you covered it's not gonna be me live it's going to be jeremy live here on the raiders report that enough that should be enough to get you to hit that sub button